And welcome back to more of The Real Money Show and welcoming our listeners at News Talk 770 in Calgary as well. On the show now, Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal. He was once in the New York Post that if Nostradamus was alive today, he would have trouble keeping up with Mr. Salente. Welcome to the show, sir. Oh, thanks for having me. Hi, Gerald. This is Jeremy speaking from Hello, Guildhall. Jeremy. Hey, great to talk to you again. Um, I wanted to start off right away. We actually were talking at the top of the show, um, always looking at uh, what we call retail versus reality in terms of the stock market's doing great and um, the press is all over all over that. But I've got a list here as long as my arm um, with retail sales being down. So I wanted to, uh, if you could expand on that a little bit, as as one of the the articles you talk about in the in one of the most recent trends journals is about the big box stores. Well, retail sales are down for a number of reasons. For example, um, on Friday, the job numbers came out in the United States, and they created about two hundred thousand jobs. And now we're even for all the jobs lost that have been lost since the panic of 08 hit, the Great Recession. So they made up those lost jobs, but how about the, economy, the, the population grew by over 7% during the same time? Hmm. So what you have is a labor force partition rate, participation rate that at its lowest levels in 36 years. But it's different even when you look back, because when you look back and you look at what laborers were participating in, they weren't participating in 100,000 of those new jobs that were created that are health aid services, that are, I love the term, hospitality sectors. Mm -hmm. That means you make beds in, in, in hotels and you could be a waiter or a bartender. And you look at the other jobs and they're in the lower end of retail and service sector. Only 10,000 or so created in manufacturing and about another eight or 10,000 in construction. So going back to retail, you have a third of the millennial generation are now living with their parents because they can't afford to be out on their own. The real estate market that, oh, they're all talking about over here, it's, you know, it's picked up. Well, 40% of first-time home buyers used to be people under 35, and that's very important for first-time home buyers. Now, eh, now it's around 20 percent, 25 percent. Goes back to retail, Obamacare. We are being forced to buy health insurance from private insurance companies. This is not nationalized health care. We're being forced to buy health care from private companies. So now. You're being forced to pay that. So when you add it all together, people have less money to go into retail. So the money that's not going into the cash register is going into raising, rising taxes across the board, whether they're school taxes and property taxes. If you own real estate, you're forced to pay those. You have the Obama tax now. And then you have a real, real situation where... People are earning a lot less money. So, for example, when we go back to the big box stores, look at Walmart sales numbers coming out. Well, they're lower than anticipated. You know, when I was a kid, there was no such thing as a dollar store. It didn't exist. But now they're all over the country, and you know who their, their prime uh, consumer is? People making $25,000 or less. So they got a lot of competition. They have a lot of uh, population to draw from, because the average salary in the United States now is under twenty-eight thousand dollars a year. So the big box stores are looking at a much smaller audience of people that used to be cons that used to be clients or or customers, I should say. So you see a shrinkage throughout the boards. It's curious. Why do you think that that's not showing up in the stock market? Well, it's, it's not curious at all because the stock market is, is, rep, is, is enriching the 1%. Mm -hmm. And that's where the dough is going. Look at your merger and acquisition numbers. You know, they're back to almost you know, pre-recession levels. You could borrow money for almost nothing if you're one of the white shoe boys. Mm -hmm. If you're in the merger and acquisition business, 
if you're in the uh, hedge fund or vulture capital, excuse me, venture capital. <laughs> you know, how dare I? So when you look at what's going on, the money is only going to the 1%. You pick up the Wall Street Journal. America's uh, income has increased, household income. And they say, and they have it right there. The wealthier got wealthier. So when the stock market is only enriching the rich, and this is, by the way, it's not only in the United States. It's in Europe. It's in China. It's the, the money's going to the top. And so what we're looking at, when you're looking again behind the numbers and the 1%, all right, Mario Draghi, the former um, uh, Goldman Sachs guy that was running the European division, a Goldman Sachs member or gang member, that's now the head of the ECB uh, for several years. They just put, instituted, you can't make this up, of course, and they take it as though this is, you know, th this makes sense. They now have negative interest rates. I know. All right, who is that enriching? It's enriching the banks and the, and, the, and the speculators that borrow that money at that low number. Now let's go back to the average person, whether it's in, again, whether it's in Europe or the U.S. Once upon a time, when I was a young kid, they used to have this thing called savings accounts. I know, it sounds like a foreign concept. People used to put money away, extra money, into the banks into their saving account. And they used to get an interest return that was greater than inflation by a sizable number. And so in the old days, they put money away all their lives. And then when they got to retirement age, they would have what they used to call a nest egg. Now you put your money in the bank, particularly now if you're in Europe, and in the good old USSA, you get nothing back. So where's the money going? Why the equity market's going up? That's the place to put the dough, because you've got no place else to put it. Gerard, Gerard what's your thoughts on these fines of the, the being levied on the banks? Uh, extreme, two million, three billion, you know, incredible amounts of money. It's chicken feed compared to the money that they make. And what it is, look, let's suppose either one of you guys, Jeremy or Paul, you go out and, um, and you pull a heist. You rob a bank. What, is, what will they do if they catch you? Jail. Jail. The, first, they'll beat the hell out of you if they catch you. <laughs> then you'll go to jail. But when the banks rob us, hey, just pay a fine. We'll do a little headline. We'll get some of your dough. We need it in the government. And you go on and you keep committing your acts. And you know what we'll call it? We'll call it a misstep. How's that? <laughs> So what do you think the trend is for that? Do you think we're going to continue to see more fines? I mean, I think you're, I, I do see little bits and pieces here, especially in Europe, where there's a bit of a crackdown happening. Do you think that there's a trend towards that, or do you think we're continue on this line where they just get slap on the nah, wrist nah, fees? Nah, that's, that's for the little people to look at, to think, to, so they pretend that they're doing something. As you're looking at, as you're looking at what, in Greece, with 30% unemployment, 25, 27 in Spain. You have, you have people, you, you, you're looking at a decline of the GDP over the last few years of over 25%. The people have lost everything, and then they come out, you know, and they, you know we're cracking down on these banks for their misdeeds. I forgot, mis, you know, misdeeds, misrepresentation, and misstatements. Did you no, see the thing on, on Italy, what they put in the GDP, by the way, prostitution, gambling? Yeah, they did that. They're doing it in the U.K. too now. Hmm. It's crazy. Oh, yeah, they're, they're doing it in a number of countries to keep to boost up the GDP. And, you know, and if they put in, they should also put in there political corruption, man. Then they'd really boost that GDP number. Where do you see, um, for investors, uh, which hard assets would you recommend? Or not so well, much know, recommend I, I your, your opinion? Again, you know, I do not give financial advice. I want to make that 100% clear. But when you look at where the future is going, I mean, they're going to keep these interest rates now down. You know, this is unprecedented. So as long as you have these low interest rates, you know, real estate's going to do fine in different sectors. 
particularly the wealthy ones, I believe. And, and uh, you know, you're going to see the equity markets until the Ponzi scheme stops. But, you know, you, you can't fight the Fed. They keep coming up with new games like negative interest rates. Mm-hmm. Stimul- quantitative easing? Who made that one up? <laughs> you know, people say to me, you know, you, I was wrong in my forecasts that, you know, we go back into a panic. Yeah, you're right. I was wrong. How the hell did I know that they're going to make up a thing called quantitative easing? How did I know that the Federal Reserve was going to dump $17 trillion into banks around the world and businesses? How did I know they'd make up a thing called too big to fail and keep it going? Mm -hmm. You know, so you don't, and how did I know they're going to come up with negative interest rates? Oh, and here's the baloney with this, too, by the way. They're worried about deflation. All right, let's see how this works, okay? Let's go back to Greece. The economy's declined 25% over the last few years. 30% unemployment, probably higher, but that's like official, around 27, 30. You've, they're dumping now all these VAT taxes and other taxes. So now you're making a lot less. They rob you of your pensions and benefits. They're overtaxing you. All right, the cost of things are going down. Duh. Meanwhile, the prices of commodities, such as food, fuel, they keep going up. It keeps, keeping, keeps costing you more to live. Yes, you have a deflation in rel- relative to the decline of the economy. But this is not deflation. Not when you have all these other costs that are being dumped on top of you, like taxes. We're not going to add those in, though, because we're the government. Not like food. You listen to every, everything coming out of the food in industry, which is a terrible name to associate with food, mm-hmm. and prices are going through the roof. You're looking at, at, at um, profits declining quite dramatically in a lot of areas, because of rising food prices. So it's not deflation. What it is, it's a rebalance of the economy the way it's supposed to be when things go down. Line number two, coming out of the European Union, that they have a 2% inflation rate number for the European Union to grow into. That's a big lie. The 2% number that came out when they came out with the euro was that a country was not to exceed that. Not that that was a market a hit. So now they're putting it in our heads that, hey, inflation's good. Yeah, it's good if you're one of the white shoe boys, a banker, the hedge funds, the private equity groups, and all of the others, but not good for the average citizen, which they could care less about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're going to take a quick break. Um, when we come back, I want to talk about the average citizen, especially in Europe, and then as well get your opinion on what's happening in, in the U.S. For, for the average person as well, if that's okay. Before we sure. do that, Jeremy, uh, Gerald, what is your website where people can get your Trends uh, magazine? Trendsjournal.com, trendsjournal.com. And just to remind you, it's more than the magazine. Each weekday, we do trends in the news <laughs> to put you ahead of the trends and on top of the news. We'll take a short break. The number to call to get in, uh, in, uh, involved and in touch with Guild Hall is one eight seven seven eight silver the real money show dot com, and that goes for you as well. Our listeners at News Talk seven seventy in Calgary. More of the Real Money Show coming up, and more of the Real Money Show. The number to start investing one eight seven seven eight silver the real money show dot com. That to our listeners as well. And News Talk seven seventy in Calgary. And welcoming back Gerald Salente, publisher of the Trends Journal. Hey, Gerald, welcome back. Um, I wanted to talk to you. We were just, as we went to break, we were talking about what's going on in Europe and this idea of a little bit of inflation not being a bad thing, but uh, certainly good for the white shoe boys. But, you know, I see that the austerity measures being placed on Europe, people are out in the streets. You know, as you like to say, when when people have nothing left to lose, they lose it. And that seems to be definitely a, something that's occurring in the state. Why do you think it is, or, or you tell us if, if you're seeing that happening in your neck of the woods, why is it not happening in, in the States? A number of reasons. You know, you go back to the Depression, 
and you used to, you used to see all those lines of people, you know, on the bread lines, and the soup lines. Well, because of the food stamps, etc., they keep you, they keep the streets clean, so they're feeding you enough where you're not going out. Mm. And then you're looking at what the nation has become. You know, we're we're the most obese nation on earth. And the people have really lost their fight, and and it's and it's it's a also a reality that if you go out and protest, they're going to beat the hell out of you. I mean, does anybody need any more proof? Look what they did to that young woman, Cicely McMillan. Now, Cicely McMillan, it's St. Patrick's Day, right? Now I'm a New Yorker, in case you couldn't tell by the accent. <laughs> and St. Patrick's Day is like a big day in New York, you know. And Cicely McMillan is obviously, obviously Irish. She goes down to the Occupy site, the Occupy Wall Street, and the cops start cleaning everybody out. And you've seen the pictures, pepper spraying, kids sitting down, college students. You get out of line, man. You know, talk about freedom and democracy. Poof. You know, that's good for the... Uh, for the politicians, but in reality, it's a different story. Anyway, she elbows a cop, a big, tough cop, elbows him, and he hurts his eye. Our brave district attorney, Cyrus Vance Jr., whose papa was Senator Vance, another guy born on third base and thought he hit a triple, Brings this young woman, 23, 25 years old, a college student, out on St. Patrick's Day, maybe at about six beers. They bring her up for trial, a three or four week trial of We the People's Money, and they have her up on charges for seven years in jail, no bail. They send her to Rikers Island, and then they find her guilty. The elbowing a cop, a big, tough cop. These guys are always tough, by the way. You know, and they got all their buddies around them, or with a lot of body armor and guns. Anyway, they end up giving her three months in jail, five years probation, and she has to go for mental health treatment. Oh, my God. Yeah. Welcome to America. Put a big K on that one. Why aren't there any protests? Hey, try this one on for size. El Presidente of Los Estados Unidos, Barack Obama, that all those liberals love. You know, the man of hope and change. The Nobel Peace Prize winner <laughs> signs into order on New Year's Eve 2011, when nobody's paying attention, the National Defense Authorization Act. It gives El Presidente and the flunkies around him the right to take a guy like me, say that you guys that I'm calling overseas are terrorists, and that I'm associated with terrorists. They could come and take me away. No judge, no jury, no trial, no charges. I'm gone. Why aren't there protests in the United States? So w Look what's going on with the NSA. Everybody's scared stiff in this country. You get out of line, they'll get you out of here. So, so what, do you, what do you, in terms of trends going forward, and, and obviously we're seeing a certain amount of corruption happening, which would be an understatement, well, what kind of trends do you see in terms of markets? How long do you think they can continue going this way, and, and what markets do you see as either the next crash or the next potential? I would have thought it happened already. Yeah. Because they're going to, I'm, I'm, I've been betting on interest rates going higher. And I, I didn't have a, you know, I, I, this is unprecedented. It's destroying the economy. It's fueling a phony stock market. And when is it going to pop? At some point. But the timing is very difficult. And people ask me, you know, I predicted the beginning of the gold bull run. And that's. That's a fact. It's right there in the Trends Journal. Anybody could go to our website, trendsjournal.com, and you'll see it. When it was $275 an ounce, I said that was the beginning of the gold bull run. And I'm into gold. You know, I've been buying gold since 1978. And I don't buy it to trade. I buy it to hold. 
and I buy it for my golden years. That's what gold is for. So I still believe gold is a sound investment. Why is it so low? We're looking at negative interest rates. In the old days, if this was just a few years ago, that would have been enough to drive the price of gold up at probably about $200 an ounce. That they're devaluing their currencies at any cost to keep the Ponzi scheme going. So people say, well, you're saying the gold is fixed? Well, we saw what happened with Barclays. And we saw, oh, it was a misstep and a misrepresentation. And then we saw what happened with the LIBOR rate. Yeah, it's rigged. Everybody knows it. It's a fact. Not making it up, not a conspiracy theory. We know the markets are rigged. It's a fact. And you saw what's going on. Oh, you asked me about government regulations and fines. The SEC came out today. Securities and Exchange Commission, we're going to crack down on that high-frequency trading. Yes, yeah, sure you are. You know that the Forex is rigged to the tune of $5.3 trillion a day worth of trading in currency trades. So to me, they're artificially holding down the price of gold. And to me, it's still, you know, I, I'm, in it, I'm in it for the rest of my life. And, I'm, and, and boy, I'm happy I have it because one day something is going to implode or explode these markets, these fake markets. If you lived in Ukraine right now, you wish you had gold or silver? Or would you rather have their currency? You think you could buy anything you need with a couple of gold coins, opposed to having their worthless currency at a time of civil war? So that's the kind of reasons why you also have it in these times of high volatility. If you lived in Thailand, same thing. Look at the bot. Look what may happen. Well, you know, who knows what's going to happen in India with the new with the new uh, government? How long is that going to last? Look at the numbers that just came out. The expectations from the IMF. Uh, on China's growth. They're only looking at 7.3%. I mean, that's lower than it has been since 1990 already, and that'll be even lower. So gold, to me, is the ultimate hedge. Well, Gerald, I have to tell you, I'm a, I'm a big fan of the, the Trends Journal. I read it all the time. I always find it really informative, and I, I really appreciate you coming on today. It's always great to talk to you and hear your, uh, your point of view. I wish more people, um, and this is why we're having you on, more people would hear that point of view. I think um, we're, we're fighting that fight in terms of against the, the mainstream media that way. So just want to thank you again and, and encourage people to get the, the Trends Journal. Well, thank you, Jeremy and Paul. Thank you, Gerald. You know, it's great, John, that you see that someone like Gerald Salente has been buying gold since it's $275. Even though we're trading, you know, just under $1,255 today, he's still holding and buying gold. And we encourage, you know, our clients, our listeners to get involved, own some hard assets, whether it's silver, which I think is extremely undervalued, gold as a hard asset, platinum, palladium, any one of those four metals. You can buy it to, for immediate delivery. You can open an account for a depository where you can take your product and store it with us in a safe, secure, insured location. And the third option you can do is if you want to finance your precious metals, we have that available to you. So this is a great time to get our precious metal advisor, get an information kit on how to invest, or just give us a call at uh, one eight seven seven eight silver Speak to one of our uh, brokers. They'll be happy to hold your hand, take you through the whole process. And maybe a uh, peruse of natural fancy colored diamonds as well. Where Absolutely. You're there, right? This is one of the best kept secrets in the world of savvy investors. This is a type of investment where you can get involved for as little as $12,000. Natural fancy colored diamonds tend to double every four to five years on average. Every diamond that we sell at Guildhall comes with a GIA, which is a Gemology Institute of America. That's the certification of the stone. We give you an independent appraisal. You have a money-back uh, guarantee, so if you per purchase something um, within 10, 10 days, you can bring it back if you're not happy with the product. We belong to the NCDIA, which is important, and we're a Canadian company serving our customers throughout Canada. I think the takeaway, John, especially when I speak to Gerald, and uh, again, I, great perspective. He's always, uh, for me, when I read um, the things that he puts out, I always find myself having these epiphanies. But it, it certainly seems like there, there's very few options. We're definitely in unprecedented territory mm -hmm. in terms of where the stock market is, the, the type of controls that are being placed, the type of 
images that are being projected in, in mainstream media for, for regular people. Um, you know, I read Drudge Report all the time, and that's where you kind of see these squirmishes, for whether it was that McDonald's uh, strike a few weeks ago and things like that. But they're really hard to get some sort of groundswell going in the U.S., and it seems that people are really on their own. And I think that's why you see this stealth bull market in precious metals where people say, you know, that it's not that the sentiment, yes, there's a, a sentiment that's low in, in the market, but the physical buying is there. It's huge, and it's in a bull market. They're just buying it everywhere else, but in your local neighborhood, and all you have to do is ask 10 neighbors, 10 friends, how many people own gold and silver, and you'll start to find out that if less than 2% do, you have to look at the value. Is the stock market overvalued? Is, have interest rates really pushed real estate very high you know what is that is that something that's set to continue what's overvalued what's undervalued keep your head look at the facts look at the fundamentals and that's something that we help people with we have the precious metal advisor we have investors kit so that you can get informed on the fundamentals decide for yourself whether or not it's important for you to own gold and silver in your portfolio and whether or not you want to be excited about uh, natural fancy colored diamonds as well That'll wrap it up for another week, fellas. If you want to catch more of Gerald Salente, it's trendsjournal.com. And to locate these guys and talk to Guildhall, that's easy as well. one 877 the real money show.com. And thanks once again to all our listeners, new listeners at News Talk 770 in Calgary. This has been The Real Money Show.